Good evening and welcome to an introduction to A-Level Design and Technology Product Design at Corf Hill School. My name's Mr Storey and I would have far preferred to have met you all in person this evening but given the circumstances we're going to do our absolute best to give all the information that you might need on the A-Levels here at Corf Hill School. Right, so what we're going to do this evening is I'm just going to run through the course, give a little bit of information about the core content um, and then I'm going to explain a little bit more about the sort of things that you might be doing on the course if you choose it next year. Uh, give some information about the entry requirements and skills that you might need to succeed and also things that you possibly could go on to with the qualification once you finish here uh, at the end of year 13. Right, just to get started then, a little bit about the course. Uh, product design is a huge part of the world today. Um, the number of products that we all use on a daily basis is phenomenal. Uh, and having an opportunity to actually gain an insight into the design of products is an exciting one. The A-Level at Design Technology Product Design at Corfields is a creative and thought-provoking qualification and it's designed really to build practical skills alongside theoretical knowledge and also develop confidence um, for students to succeed in a variety of careers across design, engineering and architecture. We've got a real supportive department here uh, and our aim is to encourage students to be creative innovative and also challenge you all to be your absolute best. I've got some year 13 students that have given a few quotes there as you can see about the course probably the one that stands out for me is the one that it's allowed a passion to take off and also given um, the young person an opportunity to take design technology at university that they're looking forward to starting next September grades permitting. Right what would you actually do on product design a level course right so the course itself is split into two um, halves okay so half of the course is on um, the exam element at the end of year 13 uh, and there's two exam papers there one of them is based on technical principles and the other one is based on designing and making principles we'd spend the, a great deal of time through the through the course weekly lessons and we'd be covering theory um, every cycle every two weeks and we do regular assessments to support students and hopefully make incremental improvements in those assessments throughout the course alongside that so half of the marks um, will be based on the exam or the two exam papers i should say but the other 50 percent of marks go towards um, the a level are from what's called an nea now most of you will be familiar with this because neas are used often in gcses and those of you who might have studied a level uh, sorry gcse product design or graphics um, are currently in the middle of their NEAs at the moment, which stands for non exam assessment. So it's a piece of coursework and in product design, that piece of coursework would probably last almost a year. And it will be about you embarking on a project of your own choice. Um, and we generally try and advise students to choose something that they've got a passion towards. Also choosing something that might relate to that kind of specialist area that they might want the course to take them on to. So if they were engineering based, they might choose a more of an engineering based brief or if they were uh, more product design or graphics, maybe they'd se select something a little bit more along those lines. Um, but you'd spend year 12, we're going to do two major projects in uh, in year 12. One of them would be based on graphics and one of them would be based more of an arc on, um, so the graphics one would be based on an architectural outcome and then a product design outcome that would be where you have an opportunity to design and make a fully working prototype for a new product. This year we're doing a lamp and all the students are designing and making their own desk lamps. Uh, and they, they're actually really enjoying that and actually producing some fantastic outcomes. And obviously this then leads into the year 13 um, non-exam assessment that you'd study all the way through until about March in year 13. So the course is kind of a bit of two halves. There's theory in it. There's half, half of it's based on an exam, two exam papers. And then the other half is on a non-exam assessment, which is coursework based. 
entry requirements right so what, what we do find is most students who take an a-level in product design have either studied a gcse in graphics or product design or maybe engineering so they've got a familiarity with with the subject and the department and the use of a variety of materials and tools equipment however it doesn't necessarily mean that if you're a student who's considering doing this you must have done that that's not the case at all um, but we do normally see that students carry on from GCSE into A-level. Um, so if it is something that you haven't done before, we would expect to see uh, an interest in designing and making and, and a real passion for design or some, something that you would want to want to do with it. Um, otherwise, we would expect four GCSEs of a grade four or above, probably to include in maths and the science and the English, uh, because a lot of the content is um, it's spread across those different subjects and we kind of utilise the skills that are the key, um, key use of English, key use of mathematical skills and obviously scientific principles that are quite important. For some of the elements in product design. We also ask for a willingness to embrace ICT. The main reason for that is, is a lot of design work now is produced using computer aided design um, and we're fully equipped here at Caulfield School with uh, SolidWorks 3D um, design package that's fantastic for students for developing three-dimensional designs and we also have a variety of 3D printers and laser cutter to allow students to, to, to achieve that really high level of accuracy in product outcomes. OK, so what skills do you need to succeed? Now, this is quite crucial because we, 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 we always like to think that that um, we know what we need, but you know, often it's not necessarily the same for all subjects. But we would we would probably suggest that good problem solving skills, you know, an ability to recognise problems and maybe uh, identify solutions is, is is something that we'd hope that you might have. A bit of creative thinking. I think all product designers need a little bit of creativity. Um, and I guess it's our job here as teachers to try and extract that creative thinking and support you with that good organization it's there's a lot of coursework there's a lot of management there's a lot of, a lot of kind of use of tools and equipment a variety of different things so you have to be quite organized you have to be able to plan ahead quite well self-discipline that i've dropped that in there because we'd be working on projects over quite a long period of time you know we'll be doing two portfolios in year 12 um, and obviously they might be six months uh six months work so you have to be self-disciplined to, to kind of be determined to finish off work at home in your own time and also come back after school if need be um, to do that, go that extra mile. Uh, motivation and enthusiasm, that generally comes with the subject. It's a really enjoyable subject, but you have to be motivated. You have to enjoy making things. You have to enjoy designing things. Um, and I've also put technical ability is useful, although not essential. Uh, the ability to draw is often seen as something that's really important, but actually it's not necessarily the skills of drawing. It's more about the ability to communicate your ideas well um, and being able to use 2D design and um, uh, 3D CAD is, is, is often a good method for that. Future pathways, where can it take you? Right, universities obviously is a is a number one priority for a number of students. Um, we find that students go on with uh, product design A-level and they could do graphic design, engineering or architectural specialisms. Uh, possible employment routes, routes are, are, are there, uh, level three apprenticeships or opportunities uh, for those who, who seek and find. Um, but really, you could lead into a wide variety of professions and I've just listed it's not a full list there, but there's just some examples of some of the different kind of careers that could um, be formed from taking an A-level in product design. I just wanted to share with you a couple of the outstanding outcomes that we, we, we come up or students come up with here at Caulfield School. You know, here's a typical example of an architectural model that's been produced for their final A-level NEA. Um, and you can see the student there has, has designed a Riverside Cafe for a local architectural firm and they've used a variety of tools and equipment and materials and resources to make a really high quality architectural model. Um, on the other side of things, perhaps it's more a product based um, outcome that you produce. And this is an example of an A-level student who's uh, come up with a new display unit for point of sale display unit to go in a department store. 
Um, let's hope it's not uh, one of the ones that's folded. But uh, yeah, a department store for a new a new uh, range of cutlery there. So they've come up with a range of ideas and they've produced a prototype there that, that then can be stored in the shop and, and, and measured on its success. Okay, that's me done on all of the information I was going to pass over this evening. Uh, one last thing I will say is the course is great fun. It's really enjoyable. It actually has so many skills in it that can be built upon um, and take on into future life. Um, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask any uh, in the chat window now. Otherwise, if you would like to just send me an email with any questions, I've put my email address there for you. Um, thank you very much for attending and listening, and um, I will now transfer over to answering any questions via the chat. Thank you.